Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, coming out of the great book of True Life, sharing with you guys something that I heard earlier while listening to this. Now, this is the great book of True Life, and I was listening to the audio over there in YouTube when this particular verse jumped out at me, and I thought I would share it with you guys. It's talking about our family members, those that are rejecting us, making it difficult for us to carry out our mission. And these verses talk about what will actually happen to them. What will be their payback, I should say. How it is that they will learn their lesson that what they have done was an error and will make it so that they will never do it again. Well, let's jump down to teaching three out of volume one and let's see what will be their great payback. So let's start down here in about verse 15, which says, I grant you strength so that you may overcome your ordeals. Talking about those of us who are on this particular mission, the 144,000 plus that great multitude that no man can number. Many times you don't hear about those guys, but they're just as important as the 144,000. When it's all said and done, because they too will have the mission of repopulating the earth after the wicked has been removed. Verse 16 says, I observe how your loved ones disrupt your lives and submit you to many tests. The greatest obstacle for some in order to follow me have been their parents, while others, it has been their children. <laughs> now, this goes along with another scripture that we did a class on not too long ago on how it would be these parents who will be the number one obstacle coming out of the Old Testament. But it talks about how the parents will actually try to have these disciples killed in the end times for their prophecies. And then there is other scripture that talks about how the children will actually turn the parents in. When the authorities come to look for these parents or look for those who are keeping the commandments, it'll be the children that's going to turn these parents over to the municipalities. So that's what this verse is talking about, how they are our greatest obstacle, the children and the parents. Verse 17 says, many have come up before this manifestation in a state of tears well aware that in order to hear me, they had to leave their home in strife. And nevertheless, they have insisted on hearing me. So there are those out there who had to actually leave their home. Could you imagine that some of these people are now homeless, living in the streets because they couldn't serve our father in their own home? I could imagine that there's even some parents of these rebellious children that decided to allow them to sleep in their beds comfortably while they went other places. Matter of fact, now that I'm listening to this video, I'm kind of reminded of some of my own personal situations where all I really wanted to do was just get away and go be somewhere else, even if it meant sleeping on the street just so that I can carry on with this mission. Wow, now I know I'm not the only one. It says, how many tears, prayers, and how much patience has been shown by these people in their hope that others understand this truth. And this should be repeated because it's not that these people, myself included, are trying to make others understand us. That's not what is important. We're trying to make them understand this truth and look at how they have to suffer for this truth, leaving their homes in tears. Verse 19 says, there are those who have been forced to leave their homes seeking the freedom of listening to my word a number has been forced to leave their community in order not to be exposed by parents and friends, while others have lost their means of support and are ridiculed and called sorcerers, 
still others have been denied their daily bread. So these people are living in poverty, having to give up their homes and give up their lifestyle, give up their jobs, give up their income for the freedom of listening to the word, being called sorcerers and going without their daily bread. And to me, this makes me think because they have lost their resources that they can't rely on doctors anymore. And so they have to rely on herbs or other ways of healing themselves outside of modern medicine. So they're labeled sorcerers, maybe even root doctors or something like that as they go find other ways of healing their ailments just for the sake of listening to the word, I remind you, like it says up there. And I know some of you guys are going through this and this is why I wanted to do this class. I'm sure some of you out there need to hear this. Notice right there where it says some of these people have been denied their daily bread or denied food. A lot of this comes because they're trying to force you back into the job market, making you give up on this desire, this overwhelming desire, I should say, to listen to our father's word. In other words, they're trying to starve you out, man. Verse 20 says, how could I not receive you with tenderness? How could I not overflow my balm on your wounds when you are suffering like this for following me? But I'm sure we already know this. I mean, that's one of the reasons why there is this overwhelming desire to listen to his word is we know how it all turns out in the end. But anyway, it goes on to say, but do not complain about anyone. Do not accuse any of your brothers. Leave me your cause. So here we are getting to the main part of this video. Like we said, the get back part. And notice how after telling us that we're going to be all right, it goes on to say, don't complain about our brothers. This is what we need to be getting out of this video. If we're guilty of this, we need to stop now complaining about the people that are harming us. It says, do not accuse any of your brothers, which would include our family members, our friends, our neighbors, our community, our jobs, everybody else involved. Don't accuse any of them. It says, leave me your cause that in truth, I tell you. Those who have hurt you the most will be the ones who are most sorrowful and humble to come before me in request of balm and forgiveness. In other words, healing and repentance. This is talking about the hour of conscience. See, there's coming a day when all of humanity is going to go through what's called the great awakening. That awakening that is talking about is our conscience. When our conscience, which right now is kind of suppressed and beat down by materialism and such, will all of a sudden become awakened and will be loud and will be undeniable and will be in our faces reminding us of our shortcomings and our misdeeds. For many, it will be like hell as our conscience will be raining fire on our spirits. That's what the Bible means when it says some will awaken to shame and some will awaken to remorse. It's talking about this same period here. It says, then they will say to me, Lord, forgive me how I hurt the heart of my son. Another will say, Master, I did not know my husband because I continued and I punished him by moving away from his bed to live separate bedrooms because she judged him full of darkness. Talking about those who have actually moved out of the house altogether right here in this last part. And then up there is talking about the parents whose houses we had to move out of. All of a sudden, when this conscious awakes they're going to be aware of what they have done to these disciples. 
not only aware of the truth and what we've been trying to tell them the whole time, the whole world will go through that. But for those who made it difficult on us, they will have some extra in all of this. From what I understand here, because they judged us to be full of darkness. See, this is the world we live in now where righteousness is considered evil. Those that are doing what the Bible says have been labeled satanic. Huh. It says they will ask me to forgive they will confess their faults and recognize that many times they received benefits through those they hurt. So imagine that. Not that we're going to have to tell them or remind them. They're just going to have to know how it was. Even when they were treating us so badly, we was actually praying for them. And that prayer was actually helping them. Helping save their lives, no doubt. If it wasn't for us praying for them in certain moments, they would have perished. They would have died, literally have died. But because we were praying and standing in the gap for them, all while they were treating us so horribly, we actually saved their lives. We actually benefited them. And death may be an extreme there and may be watering it down a little bit, because these people were benefiting in many ways, food, clothing. My neighbor has no idea how many times I've heard him over there trying to start his lawnmower and simply said a prayer for him. And that lawnmower started up immediately right after I said, amen. He has no idea. He simply thinks that it just started on its own. But anyway, it says, then I will tell you. While you were thinking the way to make life more painful for those my peasants, they in silence and solitude watched over you. Yeah, I never went over and told him you're welcome for my prayers and helping you start your lawnmower or your truck. Not once did I ever go over to one of my other family members and ask them for recognition on what I had done for them as far as their health. I, just like you, just carried on as if you had nothing to do with it when you were probably the number one cause for their benefit in that moment. But look how he says he's going to remind them. He's going to tell them. He's going to make them aware of it. Could you imagine their conscious, which they can't escape, sitting there constantly reminding them of the pain that they caused you all while you were benefiting them and praying for them and helping them at the exact same time. That's their payback. Not that we have to do anything. In fact, while they're going through this, we will be once again praying for them and trying to make them feel better. If close enough, we'll put our hands on them and tell them that it's going to be OK. And don't worry about it. It goes on to say, but in truth, I say, disciples who are forgiven of me, and you too, do you forgive them from your heart? So this is what I'm talking about. We're going to forgive them. Instead of laughing at them, help bring more pain on them by reminding them of some of the things that we did and some of the things that they did. No, it's going to be a forgiveness. That's our role in all of this. The verses go on to talk about Christ there, you see, in 21. I'll scroll down so you can pause if you want to and read more of it. But what it's talking about is how we will have to be like our Messiah, praying for their forgiveness, saying something to the effect of forgive them, Father, because they know not what they were doing. So I just wanted to share this with you. If you got anything out of this video, please add it down in the comment section. No need to tell us of all of the hard times that you've gone through. Unless, of course, you want to tell us of how forgiving you are of those who actually brought this pain on you. Plus what it says there about not complaining about anyone and not accusing any of our brothers. Those are the key lessons here. So if you have anything to add, please put it down below and I'll see you down there.